Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Mission Control, a podcast focusing on executive directors and nonprofit leaders and how they strive to make positive impacts in their community. I'm your host, Paul Schmidt, owner and creative video strategist for Communities Multimedia. And I would love to thank my guest for today, the executive director of Downtown Lansing Incorporated, Kathleen Edger. Welcome to the show, Kathleen. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> it's awesome that you were able to make it on this show, but as the name of the show states, we're called, it's called Mission Control, so I like to start out with, what is the mission of Downtown Lansing, Inc.? Yeah, of course. Um, the mission of Downtown Lansing, Inc. is to nurture and cultivate the sustainability and culture of our downtown district. And how did you end up as the executive director of Downtown Lansing? Oh, how did I end up as the executive director? <laughs> it has been a journey. Uh, I've lived in Lansing my whole life, uh, born and raised here as have been my parents. And, you know, as going through the traditional school system, I really thought that my path would lead me to more advertising and PR, which in a way it does, right? <laughs> We're marketing communities, um, fostering a pride and passion for the downtown district. And along the way, uh, as I was in my first professional career after college, I just started getting more and more involved as a volunteer and a community member just listening to what was happening in our downtown Lansing community and was able after a few years to come on board as the marketing manager for the organization. And from there, everything just evolved. There was a chance opportunity to go attend a Michigan Main Street conference for our executive director at the time, way up north. And I met such a supportive group of fellow executive directors, really understood the mission of Main Street and downtowns across the state of Michigan that I, I fell in love. And from there, I had the opportunity to go work as the executive director in my first executive director role in downtown Howell. Did that for six years and was asked to come back to Lansing and thought, you know, had a lot of conversation with family and friends. I, If I don't try to make a difference in my own community and continue to work in other communities, then what am I doing? So that essentially led to my role now as executive director in downtown Lansing. No, that's funny that you mentioned that. I think that when I first moved my business to Lansing, um, we met in that brief moment where you were the marketing manager at DLI and then, <laughs> and then you moved on. But for the audience, if they're just catching it um, or catching or, or just hearing about you for the first time, could you explain a little bit about the main street? Uh, you, you mentioned you going, you went to a main street conference. What does that mean? What yeah. does that, what is that conference about? So Main Street is part of the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and there is a national accredited Main Street America program. And then different states um, across the U.S. can be Main Street communities. They have to apply, right, and have state coordinating programs. And we do have that here in Michigan. And then when it comes to each individual community within Michigan, if you meet the accreditation standards, you're interested in applying then you submit your application to the state of Michigan. You go through a review process, kind of just a, like an onboarding understanding of the Main Street Network. And what I really love about the Main Street program is it provides a set of tools and more importantly, a framework for how you can cultivate great community and economic development within your communities, but with the community members, right? And you can make that whole framework work for what your community needs, but also what your vision is moving forward. And so that framework really focuses on the areas of organization. So kind of like the nuts and bolts behind the scene. How are you working with volunteers, providing outreach to the community, bring more volunteers in, um, focusing on fund development, communications with your stakeholders, things of that nature. And then there's the promotions. And promotions is exactly what it sounds like, promoting our downtowns, promoting the people and places who live here, the activities that are happening here. So that's where marketing and events, storytelling really takes place. And then, of course, business development, 
You know, there was a lot of focus earlier on with the business development pillar on, you know, tools to support your businesses, but more so like the, the newer businesses and then enter that dreaded C or P word. And it's now more about the sustainability of your district, how you're retaining your businesses, how you're lifting them up. One, so people have a personal connection with the businesses that make up their neighborhoods and districts, but then also what support programs and tools you have for them. So they not only are um, surviving or continuing their operations, they have really growing and thriving for the long term in your district. And then there's the focus on design and public spaces. How does your downtown look and feel? How do those great public spaces um, encourage people to be, encourage them to visit, encourage them to just come together for social aspects of community and how can you enhance um, the look and feel of your downtown? Now that is a wonderful comprehensive description <laughs> of what I asked about. That was great. Uh, I think you need to go on the road for Main Street and uh, just really, because that, uh, that was a master class. But I want to ask you, as somebody who is over, this is the second municipality in a row that you've overseen, that you've led. What is it about doing that in, in the downtown setting? What, what is it about that draws you to do this, this work? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, because there's so many facets of what I and our team do that I know I personally love and it keeps me doing the important work every day. But ultimately, I think it comes into the people and places who are so invested in numerous ways in their community. They, they feel that pride. They see a vision. They, they want to be part of a community. But then there's a ton of room for creativity, too, and how that happens. Creativity from everything from that, like long range planning, the market analysis, um, the development standards, the creativity in events and festivals um, and how you build your team, how you're building your budget, how you're making wonderful things happen and bring people together in outdoor spaces as well as at your businesses. Now, what's interesting to me is you're, you, you've mentioned a little bit about the creativity of things, how things are promoted, how things look and how things feel. Mm -hmm. um, and not that that's everything right. that goes into this development, but I know that you have a background in that, in that aspect. Is that where you feel the most comfortable leaning into or are you more like, well, I'm going to learn the aspects of which I don't know as much. Mm -hmm. what, 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 where, where is your uh, comfort zone? It's and, really or a balance discomfort of the two. zone. Yeah, yeah, it is truly a balance of the two. You know, in anyone's personal career, personal journey, they evolve in their in their skill set, and I believe that no matter how long you've been in a position or a certain profession, we can all keep learning. And with community building and economic development, that is so, so true. Yes, there is a degree um, of comfort in leaning in more into the creativity and the public relations side and really bridging that gap between city speak, if you will, and city rules, as well as the needs of your small businesses and balancing the needs of the small businesses with the needs and desires of the residents as well. So it's it's a delicate dance um, and a DLI and my team, we're right in the middle of all of that. But also back to your question about learning, I, I think that's a paramount part of it. When you know that there's maybe something that you're not as strong in, that you want to become more well-versed in, you want to better understand, for instance, like zoning uh, ordinances or different acronyms and funding streams and sources, making a space for that professional development for yourself, but also for your team to me is so incredibly important. It's something that uh, I continue to embrace and continue to want to lead into those areas and encourage my team to do so as well. I mean, last year for me, I, I think I called it my year of learning and putting myself in um, different workshops and conferences that Maybe I wouldn't have otherwise attended, like say five years ago, and 
took full advantage of those and very grateful that our board and our funding allowed for that. Um, but that is also, I've seen my leadership style uh, through studies, but also just personal feelings and observations has really changed, um, almost flipped in terms of how we have to adapt to the team that we're leading or adapt to the environment and the organization that we're leading. I think that's, that's amazing. And it's a testament to knowing how to grow with a city that has to keep growing and evolving. Uh, I think that that's really, you know, it's, it's really taking on that mantle of what you, what you need to do. And in fact, um, going back to when you came back, you, uh, you moved on from Howell. That's, that's where you were prior to downtown Lansing, but you moved back into a spot that you knew, but it was, it didn't look and feel the same. What were, what was, uh, some of the, you know, challenges that you had to, uh, uh, or came into when you first came back to work with downtown Lansing. Yeah, those are all great points. And it was, it was vastly different from the organization that I left. Um, I was vastly different in terms of my leadership style as well. And who knew months later, we'd also be facing a pandemic and our whole world would change. So, um, you know, I already knew the organization was going through a bit of a change. When I started, I um, came in and there hadn't been staff present in the office for a little bit. Our board was already looking at its longevity and what its next strategic plan was. Um, and then everything in downtown Lansing's world changed. We had been a downtown for 60 plus years that really prioritized the needs of a, a daytime worker. I mean, our downtown was quite literally built around it and that whole business model. And that worked really, really well until it didn't. Right. And suddenly the daytime workers aren't here every day. We can't count on that traffic or those sales. So um, we as an organization had to kind of fast forward our trajectory and our five year goals and adapt right along with that. So it was bringing on team members who had a lot of different skill sets um, and focus. And we have team members who were small business owners themselves, interior designers, worked for um, ad agencies and branding agencies. We brought on incubator programs and accelerator programs. And that wasn't necessarily our organizations, mine or the board's uh, original part of the five-year plan. But again, that adaptability in kind of assessing the needs of the community, the, not just the trends, but what was going to be viable for the next five to 10 years and shared spaces definitely um, has been a need and something that we continue to see is going to help us transition as a community and communities all across the state in the U.S. And then also, how do we need to adapt our budget? How do we need to adapt our priorities, our key focus areas? Um, and so we, we really dug in deep into that at the start of the pandemic. Um, again, like I said, fast forwarded our some of our plans, like we knew event focus was not necessarily a sustainable focus. Um, and now it's so much more on how do we extend the hours of operation for our downtown? What types of developments are the right types of developments for the downtown district? How do they also give back to the community? How do we enhance these community spaces for uh, events or just community to get out of their walls of whether they're living here or working in a, a space um, to get out and enjoy the community and just really change that narrative and perception around downtown Lansing. And that takes a long time because here in Lansing, we can sometimes put ourselves down quite a bit. Um, so how do we exude faith in uh, the community itself and the people and places? And how do we change our narrative as an organization and change the narrative around downtown Lansing? So that's been a huge focus. And we've been really um, strong advocates for the downtown, for the city of Lansing at a statewide and federal level as well, and have others really joining and being part of that. And we're super grateful for, you know, People putting their faith and belief in downtown Lansing, but I think it's because when you lead with your heart, that's evident. I agree. I agree with that. And uh, well, one of the things I wanted to, I don't want to dwell too much on the pandemic. Mm -hmm. However, I do want to just gauge your, your mindset mm -hmm. in 2020. You had just 
took on this position like in 2017, 2018. 2019, then, August 2019, well, pandemic. Okay, okay. even <laughs> even closer. Uh, yeah. And so it's like, okay, obviously I have pandemic time frame in my head. So you you bring you come in with a plan, and that completely gets erased less than like six months later. Um, mm -hmm. What were some of the things that you did not? I mean, there's a lot that you didn't expect. But what were some of the scabs that were torn off, like a band aid that was there that you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to think about this as, as well um, as what was the biggest surprise? Oh my gosh. I mean, I will just start by saying I like probably make people just completely freaked out. Didn't believe it'd be only a couple weeks. Um, and had to take a couple of days to get through the different stages of almost trauma. Like, okay, we need to talk about this. Um, we're going to cry or swear or whatever about it. And then also I don't like to just uh, be negative or talk about it. What's our course of action? And that was where some of the surprises came because you also have to, be, between that that emotional space and being taken by surprise, now how do we lead forward from here? Take a moment to know that as much as it hurts your your heart and your head, you're you're going to lose some things along the way. And mm -hmm. for us, we've lost businesses along the way, and that's devastating because i will i will say for our team myself like our business community like those are our neighbors those are our family each loss we feel it right here <laughs> um and to be able to t somehow have to go tell yourself like we knew this is going to happen doesn't make it hurt any less but how do we keep more from going through the same thing if that makes sense. No. Nope. Uh, and just hearing people's stories as they were making difficult decisions about their businesses um, was both surprising and also it was an honor that they felt safe and trusted us enough to share those stories or have those critical conversations of how they could sustain through the pandemic and then like what support they needed from us. And a lot of, again, creativity, innovative ideas came from it. And also like just we've got to do something so we're going to try this. And I, I love that our community has come together for the good of the downtown in so many ways. I mean, there, there was not just a pandemic, right? There was political and public outcry and protests happening. And we saw and felt all the emotions that our community is going through and the changes and creating spaces for that as well as recovery on multi-levels and not recovery that would happen quickly. Um, so the community came together for all of those things. And now I, will, I would say our downtown, again, business owners, residents, like they're, they're looking out for each other. And people are open to new ideas uh, and new plans and vision. They just want to know where we're going and how they can be part of that. Absolutely. And I think that that whole rise from the ashes thing is is really like prevalent for as a macrocosm. And but thinking of Lansing in general, what are some initiatives that you or let me say you and your team put together mm -hmm. that have had longevity, have had really positive buy in? Um, uh, you know, stuff like that. What, what are some of the things that you implemented during this uh, pandemic era? I would say for the last, since 2020 up until ne almost now, but you know, pretty close. What were some of the things that you did to try to try to like lean into, well, we've still got some really cool things happening here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, th there are a lot of different le levels to that and to this answer. So, I mean, when we took that time to kind of like take a step back, assess, figure out what our strategy was, it was like, let's stabilize as much as we can, provide some hope, some continuity, a friendly face that they know, um, and then strategize for how we move forward here. And one of the, I think, really huge 
community building, like it started out as a campaign, but now is more of a mantra, was the Lift Up Local Ambassador Program. And we were able to do that right alongside Ashley Willis from Michigan Premier Events and her team and bring in different ambassadors so that our businesses outside of just DLI would have residents in their neighborhood who they could count on to show up. And sometimes that was the only person they saw in their business that day at the very beginning, but it gave them hope. It gave them a sale. It gave them somebody to talk to and that they knew had their backs. And that continued to grow throughout the Lift Up Local um, program, ambassador program, and went on for a couple of years. But then that turned into, like I said, a whole mantra. And it's been part of the language we use in different campaigns and different video sources and just connecting people from across our city and our region with the, the businesses, the volunteers, with our staff, um, with spaces that all exist here. So they have that personal connection um, and feel invested in the future of this place as well. And then as we were talking to ambassadors and getting creative with like night markets and outdoor markets and things with many different partners, um, like Najima and the Afterglow Markets, uh, Laura over at Capital Hippie, I, I'm going to forget somebody, but People who were, again, just cultivating creativity and thinking about ways that the community could come together in a, in a safe space. Um, then that led to ideas of, OK, how can we lead by example? You know, there was and remains a whole host of office spaces to choose from. And one of the conscious decisions we made as an organization and as a board was, OK, we, we either stay in our current office location or how do we lead by example? Again, to change some of the story. Um, and to lift up our local entrepreneurs because that, that whole entrepreneurial, like we all had to be more entrepreneurial. I'll just say that. So we moved locations so that we could open up um, a retail incubator program to make a case for retail here because we'd heard for years, well, retail can never work here. But there have been retailers who've been here for 20, 50, 100 years. So clearly it could work. It was just starting to create that critical mass. So again, people would recognize that they could come here and shop as well as dine. And then we also needed to shift some of the hours of operation for the downtown because people weren't necessarily going to be here for breakfast or lunch every day. We were seeing that, uh, again, as a result of the loss of the daytime worker. But our residents needed light and life and energy and activities and amenities to enjoy into the evening and weekend hours. So the shops at Middle Village helped create a, a little bit of a bridge for that, for all of those items. Um, and then we're seeing them continue to succeed as we're on our fourth, fourth cohort and businesses have learned and received um, year round trainings and financial support, et cetera, as they go out into their own storefronts where they continue to maintain their storefronts and they can take advantage of the trainings. Um, and then now we also have a, a new food accelerator program that we're getting ready to start in the year ahead and supporting not just um, newer food based businesses, but long established food based businesses so that they're building a solid, more solid foundation. They have access to training, to working on certain types of kitchen equipment, uh, additional points of sales through recording studios, things of that nature. It's amazing. And, and this is just like a short amount of time. So if you started in August of 2019, which is a, a key month for me. <laughs> I mean, you haven't been in your role for five years. Yeah. And so it's just, but you've gotten, your organization has gotten a lot of recognition. Talk about your traveling out and talking with other, other folks in your position um, around the country and what you have heard and seen uh, about how they, or how they, maybe not embrace the pandemic, but how they braced themselves um, and dug in and did some similar things or some mm -hmm. lessons learned in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up the travels because again, it's like continued professional development. It's learning from other peers in your community, but it was also telling the Lansing story on both a, a local, regional, statewide and global stage so that people know the important work that's happening here. But then we could talk to them about the important work happening in their communities and oftentimes see it for ourselves, experience it for ourselves as well. And I think like so much of the common denominator that we all have or the common like thread that we talk about is, OK, we knew one of the only inevitable things in our life is change but huge transformative changes happening. And we can either complain about it or say, oh, well, it was me. I don't know what we're going to do. 
or we change with it and we look at it as an opportunity for how we build more resiliency, how we build more sustainability, how we build more of a love of local for our downtown communities, but also how we work with other organizations, whether it's city leadership, state leadership, uh, economic development agencies that are hyper local or regional, et cetera, um, and look at all of those comprehensively and have data and research to support the actions we take from here and continue to be that voice because we all knew we were uniquely positioned as advocates for our downtown communities and for our businesses, et cetera. But maybe we weren't championing it quite as well as we could have. Mm. And suddenly uh, that's one of the surprising things that happens. All eyes are turning to us because we had been the feet on the street, that trusted source. We were still all the, you know, outside of the, the briefest shutdown out there mm -hmm. checking in on our people and able to say, these are what our local businesses need. And those local businesses have a significant impact on our local economy and the statewide economy. So we were suddenly developing programs and resources all together for the needs of our different districts and cities. And that is the wonderful thing is we all, you know, travel together, go to different communities to hear those commonalities, to unify our voices for greater change at a national and statewide level. Um, but also to brainstorm the, the similar challenges that we have. I mean, many of us are facing, probably all of us in some way, a different housing crisis, different needs, right, for the most vulnerable in our city and talking through those and what our role or roles are in those conversations and how we become better advocates or how we become um, more of that developer role for good development within our cities and raise the expectations in our communities that's important. And that's definitely something that we've learned a lot along the way. I'm going to say a phrase and you brought, brought us up a little bit earlier when you said that Lansing is a little hard on itself, but a phrase that comes up a lot, mm -hmm. whether it's um, um, off the cuff or whatever, but there's nothing to do in Lansing. What is your response when you oh, overhear it's my something? Favorite like and least favorite phrase because it's, and when I say favorite, it's like sarcastic because then you can educate. Mm -hmm. And actually, have you been to, or that that's not accurate anymore? You'd be so excited, and you should really try. And you can list all of the you know beloved places that are in our legacy businesses that people maybe haven't forgot about, or um, you know outdoor amenities like the river trails and our kayaking, etc. Or you just groan and say, okay we have to talk better about ourselves and again raise that expectation because lansing deserves the best so that other people are talking well about us and other people are wanting to invest in us open a business here you know the list goes on if we are putting ourselves down to everybody we speak to including outside audiences why would they want to buy a home here why would they want to own a business invest here so there's been a a decent amount of movement and more of a regional approach to that of late over the past, I don't know, six months or a year where people are coming together and saying, no, we have to be our champions for our community. We have to stop putting ourselves down. Mm -hmm. Spoke at council last night and have um, done so pretty regularly <laughs> over the last few years to talk about expectations we set, how we get to yes together, um, rather than this either or conversation and how we lift each other up and therefore we lift Lansing up and we lift our state up and it just it has that ripple effect from there. Beautifully worded. Beautifully worded. Now we're getting close to the end here of our conversation and this is the question I always ask because it's really important. How does Kathleen unwind? Mm. What do you do outside of all of your downtown Lansing responsibilities to take a break and give something to you uh, or give, give yourself a break? What do you do? It's such an important question, especially I would say for most people in a role like mine, our teams, like it's not just a job, it's a lifestyle for mm -hmm. us. And it's a tr truly a passion and a calling. Um, but taking those, those breaks and that downtime to connect with yourself, center yourself, but also connect back with your families. I am every Monday, as long as there's not something I can't miss or I'm out of town, I go to the yoga studio next door. 
and do a lunchtime yoga class just to start the week out in my mind right to take that time for myself, whether, you know, something is stressful or relaxed or celebratory, like you can pour it all into the movement. Uh, also like just playing trips with my family. I, I do love to look ahead and have something to look forward to in terms of that, that downtime as a family, especially as my kids get older. So being conscious of the times when they have breaks for school, my husband's a teacher. So when he has breaks in the school year too, where we can all get away and disconnect whether that's up north and in the woods, on a river, out of the state, sometimes even out of the country, making sure that that we purposefully plan for that. Mm -hmm. And I have a great circle of trusted people that I can just be me. I can just be Kathleen with. And that's so important. Find your people where you can be honest and you can have everything from the celebrations to the breakdowns all together. I think that's, uh, those are wise words. And so, like I said, we're at the end, but if anybody wanted to get in touch with you or learn more about downtown Lansing, what's the best way to go about that? Yeah. Uh, to learn more about downtown Lansing, to look into volunteer opportunities, our programs, our support tools, as well as our contact information, visit downtownlansing.org. We're really excited. We also just launched a rebrand, so it's very easy to navigate and find all the information you need. But if you don't, you'll find our contact information. We love, I speak for my whole entire team, of having that follow-up conversation with you. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being on the show, Kathleen. It was wonderful uh, to catch up with you and, and get a little bit more insight into what you do and who you are. <clears throat> thank you. I really enjoyed this conversation, Paul. Appreciate Good. it. Thank you. And thank you all again for taking some time to listen to our program. And don't miss the next episode coming out in a couple of weeks. And if there's someone that you know of that you would like to hear about their journey, please email us at emissioncontrol at introduce.com. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform and give us a review. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time in the Control Center. And that's it. <laughs>